In today's video, we're going to take a look at some footage that I took in ProRes RAW a little bit less than a year ago when I was originally doing a test of ProRes RAW on the Sony FX30 that I'm filming on right now against the R3D codec in the red Komodo and the B-RAW codec in the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame. So here's some of the footage in ProRes RAW that I took, and I have to say, I am really impressed with this codec. Now, back a year ago, I had to transcode it into CDNG because that was the only way I can get it in DaVinci. But now we can put the ProRes RAW natively into DaVinci Resolve, and I actually have more controls using the ProRes RAW codec than even the transcoded CDNG. And in some ways, I actually like this ProRes RAW and DaVinci Resolve more than the R3D codec and the B-RAW codec. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this footage that I took on the Axonar set, which was a movie I was a DP and producer on that's coming out soon. And we are going to look at how the actual RAW footage works within DaVinci Resolve, because there are differences on how it handles the ProRes RAW, how it handles the R3D, and how it handles the B-RAW. And I want to show you the benefits of using ProRes RAW because I think this is going to be my new favorite codec to use now that I can use it in DaVinci Resolve. And I'm going to start making camera purchases based on if it either has the ability to have ProRes RAW out of the HDMI using my Atomos Ninja recorder, which is crazy. This thing, I actually got it right here. This thing's been sitting in my bag for a while now, and I just haven't been using it because I haven't used any NLEs that could use ProRes RAW. And the transcoding, those CD and G files were just killer on my M4 Mac Mini. Now I should also note, today's video, I'm gonna be showing you everything on the base model Mac Mini that I have right here. And for just regular editing and color grading, it handles the ProRes RAW files that are in 4.7K just fine in a 4K timeline. Now you'll see, there, there are parts where it actually does start, start to slow down, but we'll get into that. I'll show you how to make it a little bit easier if you're using something like an M4 Mac Mini. If you're using a pro level chip or a max level chip, these aren't gonna be an issue for you. To start off, here are the shots in ProRes RAW on the FX30. Now I'm using the Sigma 24 to 35, and I'm also using a speed booster because the FX30 does have a pretty significant crop. It's about micro four thirds size. So I use the 24 to 35, and as you can see right here, my computer completely slowed down on this shot. And it's because this has noise reduction. And this is where the M4 Mac Mini does slow down a little bit, is once you start adding a bunch of effects like noise reduction, whatever, uh, it can't handle it. But then you go back to a shot that I use zero noise reduction, I just color graded it, and it plays it super smooth. So I used the Red Komodo, I used the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame, and then I also, of course, used the FX30 as my camera to get the ProRes RAW from. And this has really transformed the FX30. So here's a first shot, FX30, ProRes RAW, Speed Booster, Sigma 24 to 35. And then now here's the Red Komodo, same shot. Uh, this does use a Speed Booster and the Sigma 24 to 35. The framing's a little bit different because I had to switch from camera to camera. So as you can see, the colors are really good. And in the original video that I compared the FX30 to the Komodo that I'll link to down below, the actual color science in the Sony FX30 compared to the color science of the RAW, it's almost a no brainer if you're going to use the FX30 in a professional setting now that we can use ProRes RAW in DaVinci to use ProRes RAW. So now I'm gonna show you how to color grade the footage. I'm gonna start with the ProRes RAW and we'll look at R3D and then B-RAW. So in the ProRes RAW, let's go into the color tab. See, we're dealing with ProRes RAW. You see the camera RAW tab. And when it comes directly out of the camera, it's gonna show up like this with the camera metadata and you're not gonna be able to make any changes. So you're gonna to wanna to change this to clip. Then you can change the ISO, which is great. Uh, then you can also change the color science. Right now I have the camera set to Blackmagic Gen 5. It is a Sony camera, so you know if you want to do S-Log, you can change it to S-Log. You can even change it to N-Log, Panasonic V-Log. You can change it to Canon Log 2. That's the really cool thing with Apple ProRes. Now, with the CDNG that I transcoded, a little bit of a tangent, I was only able to switch from uh, S-Log3 
to the original Black Magic log that was Gen 1 or Aces. Um, it is really cool to see that there are so many different profiles. It makes the ProRes log a much better codec to use in DaVinci Resolve than the CDNG. And not just because the ProRes is way easier to edit, especially on lighter machines like the M4 Mac Mini. Also, there is the color temperature, which we can change right here. As you can see, you can't see it as hard with this non-colored footage, but you could definitely see it's changing. There we go. That's where you could really see it. So I'll bring it back to 5,000. And what I'm going to do is a very quick color grade just to show you how I do things quickly for YouTube. This isn't necessarily how I do all my work, but I use Cinematch for a lot of my YouTube stuff just because it's really quick to get a grade. Now we're using Blackmagic Gen 5. So instead of choosing the source camera as the Sony FX30, I'm going to use the Pocket 4K, and then I'm going to transform the Gen 5 Pocket 4K into Gen 4 Pocket 4K, which maybe in the future they'll let us choose Gen 4. I kind of highly doubt it. The reason I'm doing that is one of the LUTs that I use for a lot of my YouTube videos was made for the Gen 4 Pocket, and there we go. There's a really quick color grade. Uh, and it's pretty good off the bat. If I wanted to add a little bit, I can go maybe put it to 1250 and make it a little brighter and call it a day. There we go. There's the clip. And that's pretty much it. You get all these really cool controls for the ProRes RAW in the RAW tab in DaVinci Resolve. Now, as you see, now we're on the red clip. The red clip handles the raw a little bit differently. You still can choose color science, but you're within the red color science. So either original legacy or IPP2, you could choose the color space. Again, you're really more either in the red log or you can do Rec. 709, DCI-P3, DCI-P3, D65, or Rec. 2020. You can change the curve. Now, how I've done this in the past when I'm not matching cameras is I do something like this change this here and for the most part good to go i keep my tone at medium and this at soft which it's already kind of set to and i'm good to go however in this situation because i want to try and match all the cameras together i'm going to leave this in log and i'm going to go add a node i'm going to grab cinematch and i am going to use the komodo for this one because i can't change the color science in the raw tab. So let's go down to red. Oh, there we go. Red. Komodo. Change it to this. The red log. Then I want to change it to black magic. Pocket 4K. Gen 4. Boom. Color science changed through Cinematch. And of course, you can do this through the color science conversion within DaVinci Resolve. But it is more limited as far as the amount of different um, cameras that are in its library. Um, there are certain cameras like GoPro, whatever it is, that you can't change the color science to. And Cinematch uh, is made to not just match the color sciences, but color sciences on specific cameras. So as you see right here, I have now matched it to the Black Magic. Here is the ProRes RAW. Here is the red. Maybe I need to bump the red a little bit up to match the exposure here. Maybe even a little bit more. Let's take it to 2000 and boom. Very, very similar when you look at both of them. Now let's go to the Black Magic Raw. For the Black Magic Raw, I can actually choose Gen 4. So we're going to choose Gen 4 right there, which means I'm not going to use Cinematch on this clip. I am just going to go directly put the LUT that I use because it is made for Gen 4. I'm going to raise, actually, can't raise the ISO on this one, so it's a little under. I'll just bring it up this way. It's not necessarily the right way to do it, but it's going to bring me as close as I can since I was off on that day. And I'm also going to change the color temp because it is a different color temp. There we go. You got boom, boom. And so as you can see on the B-RAW files, you can change the color science within Blackmagic's color science. You could change the white balance color space right here. You can change the gamma kind of like ProRes RAW. You could use N-Log, you could use C-Log 2, V-Log, L-Log. Uh, it does have some really cool options, and it's why I was starting to move towards Blackmagic RAW over R3D, especially because more cameras like the Sony FX30 were going to have the ability to shoot in B-RAW if you had a Blackmagic recorder. 
But since I already own the Ninja V that I have right here, and it works within DaVinci, right now, I'm just going to stick with this, and I don't have to go buy anything, and I can shoot raw out of my FX30, and if I have a gig come up that I need multiple different cameras that shoot raw, and I need them all to match with each other, and I don't want to have to go rent anything, now I can bring the FX30 in and have it as a secondary camera on set to match with the other cameras I'm using. I just have to bring some extra peripherals to make it happen. So this is how you use ProRes RAW. Blackmagic RAW, R3D, within DaVinci for color grading. You could obviously go way deeper into this, but I wanted to kind of show you how the camera RAW tab works because now that we have ProRes RAW, it's definitely going to work better in DaVinci than it did in Final Cut. It's part of the reason I wasn't using it that much. We have a lot of really cool options in here. So I wanted to kind of show you what it looks like. I'm totally gonna to be doing more content with not just the FX30 in ProRes RAW, but some of the other cameras I have coming in over the next few months that shoot ProRes RAW as well, because this is what really unlocks the camera. I have not been a fan of the Sony Color Science, but I've been using the Sony cameras out of convenience over the past few years, especially because a lot of productions when I was working on them wanted S-Log3, but now that I'm not really freelancing as much anymore and I'm doing more content creation and occasionally DP stuff, I'm just using what I want to use, and so I'm not really going to be buying necessarily any more Sony cameras, but now I have a use for this FX30 when I want to bring it in to my overall ecosystem. So if you have any questions about anything maybe that you want me to explain more in depth, maybe a future video idea, let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video.